Welcome back Troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. Today we're going to discuss Guitar Center's weird fetish with pink guitars. That finish is called Rose Gold. So within the jewelry world, Rose Gold is a blend of 24 karat yellow gold with copper and silver. Because just in case you didn't know, I thought this was interesting. That 24 karat yellow gold is actually too weak to wear, so jewelers have to make an alloy of it with other materials. That's how you get things like white gold, red gold, yellow gold, and the one we're discussing today, rose gold. Rose gold was first used in 19th century Russia by a guy named Karl Fabergé. Now that might sound familiar, a Fabergé egg, aka Russian gold? Essentially, it was a super fancy Easter egg but it's still used today and it's very popular in engagement rings. And I know what you're thinking, a pink guitar? What is this, the 80s? Or is this designed for women to mainly want to buy, kind of like the Les Paul Goddess series? No, not exactly. It's not a hot pink like a Super Strat. It's not Panther pink like Gibson used in the 80s for a brief period of time. It's kind of similar to, but not exactly Metallic Sunset, which is another late 80s Gibson finish. It's just a nice light pink color with a great shine to it. Slightly metallic, but not like sparkly in your face or anything. These things look amazing in person. Not so much in stock photos. So similar to how Chicago Music Exchange does a bunch of limited editions in Walnut, Guitar Center has done at least four guitars in this rose gold color. Two of them lie within the Fender realm of things. They're American Professional Stratocasters and Telecasters. They're both listed at $1649.99, and they have solid rosewood necks on them to make them a little bit more special other than just the finish. The Stratocaster is HSS in format, and the Telecaster is just your typical SS. But then we move on to the Gibson side of things. The first one they did was a Les Paul Traditional, and those are still retailing at $2,699, so a little bit more than a regular Les Paul Standard from the original collection. And then I believe Guitar Center just recently introduced this one, the cheapest one so far out of the Rose Gold series, and in my opinion, I think it's one of the better looking ones. This is the SG Standard, and it retails at $1,599 with a hard shell case. So if you can't remember anything else, Guitar Center likes to make pink guitars, and they look much better in person than it sounds in your head if you think, oh, Guitar Center's doing pink guitars. So what are my first impressions of this beauty? First thing I do when I open up that case, besides it being ridiculously heavy, we'll talk about that later, is the smell. Gibson no longer does that nice vanilla scent. It just smells like nitro. Not necessarily my favorite smelling guitar. I definitely had to let this one air out for a few days before I wanted to be around it. But thankfully, it does eventually go away. But I was immediately awestruck with this finish. It's not something I would have ever imagined would work, but I like the way that it can appear kind of like a bright pink at this angle, but then when you take away all the light, it turns into this dark hue. That's essentially the metallic nature of this finish showing itself off. It really is a sight to behold in person, because I would have never thought I would like a pink guitar like this. But a cool little feature that you guys might have missed in my unboxing episode is because of the rose gold being an alloy of yellow gold, copper, and silver, they kind of play on that with the hardware here. So you have chrome, bridge, and tailpiece, but the studs are actually gold. It's a mix match, kind of similar to what they did with the 2550th anniversary Les Paul. And you also have the gold screws here with the silver height adjustment screws. So they really do this whole rose gold thing justice because everything just works from the cream colored plastics which really complement the finish and heck even look at these knobs I was looking at these and I was like oh okay I see what they did there so you got gold here and a silver topper and even the output jack has a gold washer underneath it so they really did everything and when I say everything they even went as far as the strap buttons and yes they even did the tuners like that too but we'll see that more on the workbench but the next thing I noticed is there's actually a spec that is wrong on their website. They're advertising these as a slim 60s neck, which is, you know, mainly what SGs have. This has the biggest, fattest, chunkiest neck I've ever had on an SG. So that might be really appealing to you because it definitely is for me. It makes the guitar feel so much more powerful because sometimes you'll pick up an SG and they'll be like, yeah, it feels a little bit weak. I'm scared that it'll break. Not that most of them do. I just love fat necked SGs and they're a little bit difficult to find. So this is one if you want one of those. 
But unfortunately, Gibson has let me down with the quality control on this guitar a little bit. I don't necessarily think any of these are 100% returnable offenses, but there's a few things that I think you guys should know about. So first off, they actually left polishing compound on this guitar right here. I didn't notice it till I got it on the bench and I can understand it kind of blends in. It's going to wipe off real easily once I throw this on the workbench though. But something that I can't easily fix is the lacquer was put on these guitars way too thick. And when I'm talking way too thick, it's I could not tell you the serial number if I had to. The first and second digit, it's just kind of way too obscured by the finish. Even the Made in USA stamp is very obscured. And that thick finish also kind of has a negative effect on the neck where the fretboard is actually slightly underneath where the finish ends. So there's like a small ridge. Now it's not so bad on the side that you're gonna be playing it, at least this example. So the base side of the neck, it's pretty smooth. There's a small ridge, but nothing you're ever gonna notice. It's the treble side of the neck, which thankfully you don't really do too much rubbing of that besides just, you know, a hair. But if you get your finger feeling on that and you can actually see how much the finish sticks over top of the neck. Is it a huge deal? No, but I think that's something that could have easily been dialed in at the factory when they were shooting this. Some other complications of that, as you can see a little bit of finish piling up around the neck heel. It's not too bad, and you do find that on many Gibson guitars, but something that I really want to take a mention of is at the top of the headstock. There's this little area right here that looks like a finish check. That's just actually the finish being uneven. So when you catch it in the light in certain situations, it's gonna be reflecting the different colors. So it just looks like a ding or a blemish, but it's actually not. But you pretty much have that on both corners of the headstock here. The next thing is the fretboard. As always, new Gibsons always have dry as the desert fretboards, but that takes about two seconds to fix on the workbench. So definitely not a major complaint by any means. A few other small things, the plastics, they look a little bit rough in certain areas, but I tell you all these things just so you can know what to expect. So overall, besides a few cosmetic things that could have been done better, my first impressions are positive of this guitar. So to learn more about this one, let's go ahead and throw it on the workbench and take an in-depth look at its specs and parts. Inside the Rose Gold SG. There was a few more surprises, a few more disappointments, but let's go ahead and look at these. So the pickups in here are the 490 series. So it's not 490R, 498T like you normally find. It's actually the straight up 490 series. So you've got the 490R in the neck and the same 490T in the bridge. So as far as pickup readings go, that means they're going to be about the same. This one will no longer be hotter. It's just going to be about 8K ohms and your neck position slightly less than that, 7.78. Then within the middle for fun, looks like we're looking at about 4. It's not a pickup set you find too often anymore, but they did that kind of in the early 90s and in some other guitars. So here are our pickup routes. They're not necessarily the cleanest in the world. You can see it's a little bit rough right there. And you can see some light splintering right there from where it was routed. But besides a little bit of that that you could just clean off with your hand a little bit, it looks like pretty clean routes here. But there is a little bit right here where the neck joins into the body where the finish was broken. And the area I want to mention is right here. Because even if you do have the tenon cover on, you can just barely see that bare area where there's no finish. And this is the first time I'm seeing this. I'm not quite sure what would cause this dark area on the binding right there. Feels a little bit rough too. But it's actually easy to finish up Gibson's work. All you need is a little bit of a flat razor blade and you can just scrape the binding a little bit more to make it look like perfection. The only thing you can't fix is when an employee takes a little bit too much off when they're doing the edges of the frets here. Moving on here, another feature that I told you guys about earlier is you've got the chrome bridge. It just says API, Advanced Plating Incorporated, but it sits on these gold studs right here and posts. So it kind of gives you this cool rose gold effect thing. And you've got the same thing going on with the tailpiece. Both of these are lightweight aluminum in style, made by the same company, but something I wasn't expecting. I tip my hat to you, Guitar Center custom order guys. Look what they did with the ball end of the strings. Gold and silver. <laughs> they really went all out on this thing. Now it's possible that this one was restrung before I got it from the factory. Because it was strung up in a way I've never seen it come from the Gibson factory before. So that might not be a stock spec, but whoever did that, they had a sense of humor. I like it. But that leads me to one thing that I think is a missed opportunity. We should have had gold pole pieces. 
that would have transformed this guitar even more. It would have been cool. You could also say that they could have done gold frets or like every other fret be gold, but honestly, gold frets only sound good in theory. They don't actually look so good. You can check out like my Lizzie Hale Explorer reviews and the Vegas series to see Gibson guitars that have that. It just looks like you've got rusty frets. But moving on here, your toggle switch, you can see the inner shaft of it is silver. Then you've got the gold ring around that. This is that one time where Gibson's slightly pink plastics actually work for the guitar. Moving on to the knobs, the reflectors in style. So you got the silver cap to them, labeled volume and tone. And hey, the things themselves are actually gold. But how far did they take the silver and gold thing? I'm curious. I've got to pop one of these knobs to see if they did it under here too. I'm impressed. Even though you can't see that underneath the knobs, they still gave it the golden shaft with the golden washer and the silver nut. And the same thing's true for the output jack. As far as the pickguard itself, I use that same razor blade technique to kind of clean up some of these edges here. And the reason why I'm trying to make this guitar as perfect as I can is it's already been spoken for. I bought this one brand new for a guy as part of that trade, as you can learn about in that unboxing episode. So I want it to be as close to perfection as possible, but you know, this year I've bought more new guitars than I've ever thought I ever would in my life. And you know, new guitars, they are not as flawless as people think they might be. I used to think if you buy a new guitar, it would be perfect, it would be perfectly set up, you would never have any issues. That is far from the case. And I'm not just dissing Gibson, I'm talking all manufacturers. But with everything back installed here, this is a 61 styled SG. That's when they had the small wing pick guard and the tenon cover. So it's a very classy looking SG here. Moving on to the fretboard here. This is a 22 fret SG with a 12 inch radius. For the most part, once I got done conditioning this board, it looked okay. There's a few areas where the fretboard's actually slightly lower in a few spots, but is it a huge deal? No, especially once you start playing this guitar, it'll start to all wear in and look pretty nice. I need to get a good macro lens to really show you guys this stuff. The binding job on this one was okay. You can see there's this area by the 15th fret where they got lazy when they were shaping the nibs and they kind of caught it along the edge. I can't really do much to fix that, but let me tell you, pretty much just about every single new Gibson I've reviewed this year has had similar lines like that, so it, it's not a huge deal. It's come to be expected of a new Gibson, unfortunately. But other than that, the fretwork looks nice, and they did a pretty good job on this one. So I, I hate that it seems like it's a Debbie Downer episode. We're pointing everything out wrong, but, you know, I don't want anything to go unnoticed. Face of the headstock, you just have a blank truss rod cover inside here. Sleeps the truss rod itself, everything's looking good there. You have gold screws on this, but look at the tuners. They gave it a gold fastening nut, whereas the rest of the tuner is silver. And other than that, you just have the Gibson logo as well as the crown. As far as the nut goes, I did put a little bit of graphite in there just in case we needed it, but the nut width is 1.7 inches, and by the 12th it increases to 2.08. Now remember, the specs of this says it is a slim tapered neck. I think this is going to prove that wrong. There we go, it starts 0.89, that's huge for an SG. And then by the 12th fret, what are we at? Almost 1, so 0.99. It is a fat rounded baseball neck. They need to fix that on their website. Cause that might cause a return for somebody, but I personally actually prefer this neck profile on this SG. It feels great to play. And nothing crazy with the scale length, 24 three quarters. Moving on to the back side of the guitar. Unfortunately, there's a big disappointment in here. Hey Gibson, I thought we were done doing this stuff. PCBs are not dead yet. They're still out here apparently. So we've got the printed circuit board that the pots sit on, and then it's just a bunch of quick connect stuff. So what's good for you is if you want to swap out the pickups, it would be relatively easy to do. They just use those white cables. So that's a plus, but I was really expecting hand wired pots in these. I guess technically this isn't really in the original collection. So since it's just a regular guitar, maybe that's why you get the PCB. But I really feel that should be disclosed in the product specs. Then as far as the strap buttons, we were kind of talking earlier how it's also silver and gold. Nice little touch right there. The other one's right here at the base of the heel. And you've got your typical little contours for the SG body style. 
As far as body woods are concerned, it's your standard SG. Mahogany body with mahogany neck, rosewood fretboard. But the neck hides another little secret here. Remember how I said the finish is like super thick, it's really hard to read your serial number? If you get it in the light just right, it looks like 12389-0178, made in USA. But while I was looking at the serial number, look what else I found up here. Do you see that little dot right there? The spec sheet of this guitar says vintage style tuners, which made me think Clusens. That's the outline of a Clusen tuner, and you can only see it on the top two tuners, so maybe it's something else that just happens to make a very similar impression, but it's almost like that somebody had Clusens on here at one point in time, then they took it off and they filled it in and put Grovers. But this is supposed to be a brand new guitar. <laughs> Kind of a weird little thing, but I found it, so I'm gonna let you guys know about it. Here we'll take a look at the top of the headstock again. It's that area right there. That's not a ding, it's just a dip in the finish. And occasionally it appears to look like a finish check because of the unevenness to the finish. So just another small little quality control thing that you see on the edges of the headstock. Oh, and they didn't go too crazy with the tuners. They could have gave it a gold body, but what they did do is they gave it a golden screw. So I think that's good enough for me. Well, this SG weighs seven pounds, 2.9 ounces. So let's go ahead, plug it in and hear how this one sounds with the 490 series pickups. <laughs>
this guitar, what are my final thoughts on this thing? There were a lot of small quality control issues with this guitar. And I hate that this kind of turned into a nitpick video. That was not my intentions. It's just I kept noticing more and more small things that could have been done better at the factory. And I make these videos to help Gibson, not to bash them. I want them to know what's coming out of their factory and what small work could be done to make their instruments better. I get that these are handmade instruments, but that's not an excuse for sloppy work that took me a couple minutes just to finish up. But all in all, if you were to go to a guitar center, pick one of these things up, would you notice half the stuff that I showed you? Probably not, because at first glance, this thing is beautiful, it's nearly perfect. But once you start going over it with a fine tooth comb, that's when you start seeing a few imperfections. But let me tell you, this SG, I was not really feeling like playing guitar today, but once I plugged this thing in and started noodling, it's like, oh yeah, it's time to play guitar. <laughs> this is one of the best sounding SGs I've had in a long time. I'm not a big SG guy. I love the limited editions, so this one kind of speaks to me from that aspect. But this bridge pickup is a monster for classic rock tone. That's the 490T pickup. You don't find that in a lot of guitars. But it's not as hot as the 498T that you typically find. And I just found that it nailed tons of classic rock tones. Like songs that I haven't played in forever were just coming out of this guitar. And it was a phenomenal experience. Because I'm traditionally a clean guitar player. I don't play with a lot of distortion. When I pick up a guitar, the first thing I do is just some clean riffs. I usually have to work at something distorted. But this time it's like, let's play on the dirt channel the entire time. But the neck pickup was pretty good for clean tones too. Nice, fat, and juicy. But above all else, it was this neck profile that I fell in love with. It's a nice fat neck. Not what you typically find on an SG, but it's something that works very well for me. And it helps that it's a pretty fancy SG, right? So in the end, would I recommend the Rose Gold Guitar Center SG Standard? Yes, I would highly recommend this thing because <laughs> it's just a bunch of fun. So if you're interested in one of these, check out your local guitar center because this one is already spoken for. But let's go ahead and throw this one under blacklight and see what we can find. Being a brand new Gibson, yeah, there's not a bunch glowing here. But you can still see how metallic-y this finish is, even under blacklight. That's kind of cool. So, yeah, not too much going on here. Kind of boring under blacklight, but it shows you just how shiny this finish truly is. But you get a little bit of glowing on the headstock. And now for the biggest surprise of these. If you happen to catch the unboxing video, I kind of dove into these cases a little bit. This is the high performance case from 2017 that were used on the HP models. But it, those things didn't sell that well. A lot of them seem to have gotten parted out by a place called Gibson Dependable. Something like the Stratosphere also usually has them. So I'm guessing Gibson kept these cases back or had a bunch of leftover and they happen to have used them up with this limited edition run. And this case, believe it or not, if you wanted to buy one of these brand new in 2017, they retailed at $699. Now on the used market, they sell for about, you know, 250 to 300 as top dollar, but they are really nice cases. So the latches on here, they're just kind of a push button. They just do it like that, kind of like a TSA latch, but not quite the same because these are metal in construction. You have a real wood handle, so I don't think you'll ever have to worry about these things breaking. I guess one downside is there is no lock to these cases. So if you wanted to use this as like a flight case, you might not be so good there. You have a rubber ring that I think potentially makes these waterproof. I might be incorrect on that though. But I like the interiors for these because they were sculpted for all three SG styles. So you have your traditional SG that has the strap button right there. You have your left-handed SGs as well as the high performance series as well as the modern series. So no matter where you move your strap button, it's accommodated for it. And usually on cases like these, this is like a hard, rigid foam. It's still hard, but it's got a nice plushness to it. These really are fantastic cases. And they've got neck support all the way up. Even the lid buttons are like leather-like material. I don't think you'll ever have to worry about those snapping off. And your little compartment right here sleeps all your case candy. In this case, we get a strap, the Gibson's owner manual, the Gibson bag to put all this stuff in, warranty, baby photo, polish cloth, Gibson multi-tool. And I guess if you can't read your serial number, you can hope that this is the one that you have. 
But the only downside to this case, besides being kind of smelly, is it's ridiculously heavy. Like, you're not gonna wanna gig with this thing because it's just ridiculously heavy. So heavy, in fact, let's go ahead and go throw it on the scale, just so you guys know. So just the case empty is about 21 pounds. Normally, a case with a guitar in it is about 18 pounds or so, 17 to 18. So this thing is almost 30 pounds to lug around. Definitely way heavier than a regular guitar with a case. But, you know, it also offers you tons of protection, so it's kind of a trade-off. I guess you could also say that the red and the silver color of this really complement the rose gold finish too, so maybe it's just a match made in heaven. I hope you troglodytes enjoyed this review of this brand new Gibson SG Standard in Rose Gold, a limited edition from Guitar Center. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.